chessboard and chess players, or are we just going to talk about the movement? Uh, so basically, for the first day, uh, since uh, many people are here, I just want to give an introduction. Um. So shall we start? Yeah. Okay, let's start. So, Sure. Can you see this full slide? Yeah. Okay. So first of all, I'm going to go into present mode and I am going to show. Let just let it load. So yes, chess, the gym of the mind. So what are the benefits of playing chess? Can anyone uh, name some? Um, hi. Hello. Uh, I have one question. Um, I want to just see your screen when I'm on the Zoom, but apparently whenever somebody's talking, I'm seeing those people. I don't know, do you know how to fix that. That is because uh, many people are uh, talking at once. So that's what's and going against everyone. Tell everyone to be on mute. In your video. Yes, I've done it. Wait, who's, who's talking? Okay. So yes, what are the benefits of playing chess, everyone? Okay, kids. So I am going to mute all of you so that the session can go smooth. Okay. And then at the end, uh, you know, Shonak, when he says that it's open for question sure. answer, then you all can raise hand and he will be answering the questions one by one. So till then, I am going to mute all of you. Okay. So let's get started with the benefits of playing yeah. chess. So yes, everyone, I will start now. So the benefits of playing chess. So the first and biggest one is it improves memory. Basically, that means that, for instance, we are always filled with everything in our own world. So we don't have much to think about. But if you play this game, you can have patience and it will automatically revoke your amount of memory. So the next is it improves your reading skills. If this is even, even if this is a chess game, it's a game that involves mind and the mind makes it so basically, the way of reading is that you have to always follow up with the text. In the same case, chess is also the way you have to follow up with the moves. So it will improve your reading skills. Number three, increase our confidence. So since I have gone to many tournaments, I have gone to a state tournament, local tournaments. It increases our confidence a whole lot. Confidence meaning that if anyone wants to do something and they're not sure about it, then it will boost that skill up. The fourth one is that it, you can become a good listener. Along with chess, it really gives you a lot of patience. Patience meaning that you can stand, withhold and long. If anyone talks or does anything, you, can, you don't have to interject in between and you can just be calm. It helps for creative thinking. So as many of you know, chess is a game where you have to invent different types of strategies in order to make the king's opponent go down. So from that same verse, it helps with creative thinking. Like, uh, has anyone heard about forks? I hope you have, but forks are a way of doing uh, two piece attacks. So that's a creative thing. It helps to raise patience and willpower. So yes, I have talked about patience. Patience is basically the way you can handle things without having to interject or do anything in between. And it also increases your willpower. So the willpower is that you will have the urge of doing something. 
it increases in the problem solving skills yes because we always have to invent new strategies in order to win the game so yes it does increase a lot of problem solving skills it helps us to develop a mindset to accept challenges it certainly does because whenever you're playing chess you are already in a challenge so if you want to get out of that challenge successfully you have to go and invent something out of your own head so yes it's always a challenge and the last one this also helps us to have more ability to concentrate since we are a ch- since we are chess players we need lots of quietness without quietness we may be rushed upon but if uh, we want to concentrate in the biggest and best way we have to really put our mind into the game and that's how we win so yes the more we play chess the more we get smarter also it will not be certain that you will always win all the time but along with those losses tumi video on karo video on korte bolche mere ki ta aunty kyu sunte pachche na tumar kotha video ha video on karo video to on hi ache can you all see me yes shaunak we can see you okay i'll go back to the sharing screen so yes the benefits of playing chess as, as i was on the more we play chess the more we get smarter also it will not be always certain that you will always win all the time but along with those losses they provide a valuable lesson to you if you make a mistake you can always revisit the mistake and correct it later so that when you play with someone else you know what that tactic does from there you all you just learned a new tactic so let's go to the next slide what is chess so this is a visual representation of a chess board as you uh, we yes. cannot see slides sir. we okay, cannot yeah. see slides i'm sorry it's really uh, just my first time doing it yeah it's fine it's fine yeah please continue Can you see now? It's very black. The blank screen we are seeing. Ah, huh, that's weird. It's okay, Shonak. You can continue. Is it on now? Uh, still, we are seeing the black screen. that just yeah. uh yes now we are able to see a little screen yeah yeah now we are able to see why chess that is the slide we are right now seeing so i can go to present mode again okay is it visible it says loading yeah now we got yeah why chess that is the slide presently we are seeing so as we can see this is a visual representation of a chess board um so what is chess chess is a board game for two players it is played in a square board also known as an 8 times 8 board made of 64 smaller squares so if you know that 8 times 8 equals 64 with eight squares on each side each player starts with 16 pieces eight pawns two knights two bishops two rooks so this particular piece is the pawn this particular piece is the rook this particular piece is knight this is a bishop this is a queen and a king and you can just start over all of all over again and these are the same rules that apply to this the goal of the game is for each player to try and checkmate the king of the opponent checkmate is a threat to the opposing king which no move can stop so i will just show you what the check is So for instance you take out a pawn on this square that is also known as e4 and then the opponent moves on to the response square as e5 i move out my bishop on to uh this square and he moves out his knight on to this particular square of f6 and so if i r- randomly just go and uh, go in front of the king then that makes a check 
And so the king can either accept the check, it can capture it, or it can go back over here to just safeguard itself. Do you get at that? I hope you do. Uh, so from there, we will go back to the uh, slide presentation and I will just put the pieces back together. Okay, slide presentation. So yes, during the game, the two opponents take turns to move one of their pieces to a different square of the board. So it's back and forth action. The other player, white, has pieces of a light color and the other player black has a pieces of a dark color as you can see white is this color and black is that color there are rules about how the pieces move and about taking the opponent's pieces off the board the player with the white pieces always makes oopsies uh makes the first move because of this white has a small advantage and wins more often than black in tournament games so from there you can basically see that what is chess you can see it's an eight time eight grid with uh, uh, 32 pieces in total because 16 and 16 equals 32 and it has 64 squares with a special piece that is a king and a queen those are special pieces i think so the next slide why chess again this is a visual representation that is just repeated in that earlier slide so i will skip it Chess basics number one. Chess is a board game for two players. Of course, it's played in a square board made of 64 smaller squares with eight squares on each side. Each player starts with 16 pieces, eight pawns, two knights, two bishops, two rooks, one queen and one king. So this is basically taking the steps from last time and they're putting it back on the uh, recap thing. The goal of the game is for Shaunak, we cannot hear you. Shaunak? Black has pieces of a dark color. There are rules and I will explain them exactly right now after I read this. And about taking the opponent's piece of the board. So uh, when I have gone to tournaments, I've often seen that since white moves the first move, they have the easiest amount to way to checkmate as far as my understanding uh i am a uscf rated guy that means uh uscf is this united states chess federation where i train i am a 635 there i'm a little low because i haven't attended for two or three years now but that is how the tournament style works and they have a huge chess boards let's now I'll go to chess basics number two so you can see that a pawn, this black piece as a pawn, it can move two squares from the home row. So if I can show you a visual representation, then uh, that'll be great. I will just show you on the big board. So the pawn, if it's white, it always moves first. If it blacks, if it's black, Shonak, we cannot hear you. It gets captured. But now if the capturing mode is there and if the pawn and the other pawn are meeting at an intersection and if, if it's black or so white's turn, white can capture the black pawn. Meaning that this pawn is now off the board. Now white has taken a piece and now black is losing one. Shaunak? Yeah. Shaunak, can you check your mic in between the voices breaking or disconnected? We cannot hear you. 
I don't think this is uh, the internet problem. I think this is just uh, overall. Anyways, I'll go back. So where uh, where did, uh, where did you hear me from last? So this uh, second uh, second. By the pond. Yeah, you heard me from here. So. I'll yes. So we, uh, you, you, you know, the uh, one of the black pawns was out of the chessboard, right? Oh, so we okay. saw that. So you can you can cover the basics of chess too. That's fine. Uh, but if you can go a little slow with it, and at the same time, uh, be sure that you are uh, very much near the mic so that the sound comes out consistently. Okay. Now is it better? Yes. Okay, so I was last at this position where the pawn was at e5. I mean, uh, yeah, e5. So from there, if if it was about to be captured, then this piece, it can go diagonal and capture that, that other piece to make that piece go off the board. So that means that if a white pawn or black pawn is opposing the other pawn, and if it's in a situation to capture the pawn with no other defender, then this pawn will be out of the board. Again, the diagram will be shown. So this pawn will go back to its original spot and this will go here. If it's white's turn and if this pawn is just laying around, out that just got switched I'm sorry anyways from there I will go to the next piece the knight so it's like a horse we can call it as a knight or a horse but in chess they call it as a knight because you know have you ever seen a castle like in uh, Europe there's many castles they have knights with all those metal armor and everything in chess, this is called a knight. They call it a, a horse. They call it as a knight. So a knight moves in an L shape. L meaning that it moves uh, two squares forward and one square left or right. So it can move like that. So it can move one, two squares forward and one square left or right. It can move either from here to here or from here to here. However, if this knight is in a position to where it is free from the board, it can go in all these squares, then it can move the other way around. It can move backwards. So it can move one square forward and two squares back. That is also a possibility. From this position, it can also capture the pawn that is located on the square. It can be like that and it captures. So the black pawn is off the board. It can also capture an L shape. So recap again, this goes in an L shape. So first it goes number one and then it goes two squares forward or backward. And from the home row, if it's directly over here, then it can move two squares forward and one square left or one square right. So now the next piece, the bishop. The bishop is a really tight and cool piece. I like the piece. When the bishop is in the board, it can really knock some sense into the other players. So yes, a bishop cannot jump over pieces, but the knight can, as you can see, I just jumped. So the bishops always move diagonally. It moves in a total slash. It moves diagonal. In any square, it can move any amount of squares diagonally if it's in the chessboard. And if it's in an open square, it can move diagonally back, diagonally forward, diagonally back again. It can move anywhere, but it, it has to be diagonal. So let's go to the next piece, the rook. So there are, there are four rooks in total of the chess game. Two of them are white and two of them are black. The king just got taken away. So yes. There has to be some kind of passage open for the rook to get through. So I will open this pawn up. 
and this rook will go through by its by its own count so as you can see it moves straight if it was in a open square it would move straight forward straight backward straight sideways onto the left side and straight right side it cannot move diagonal or it cannot jump squares like the knight can so the rook on all of the board is just basically the same function if you also open up this rook then it will go straight and it will go left or right but it cannot go diagonal so from the next uh, objective of course i got uh, this is a king not a queen i got messed up on that a king is a really dramatic piece because if the king starts moving then it will only move one square at a time so for instance if it's on an open square it can only move one square at a time but any direction it cannot jump squares or move two squares at a time it can only move one square any direction left right diagonal bottom forward anywhere but only one square however the queen is a combination of all but except just the knight the queen when it's open it is a total beast it can go left it can go right it can go diagonal it can go bottom it can go to the bottom it can go uh, straight again it can go anywhere so that is what the queen is and so now let's get into forks i will just copy this in the black player follows but in order to do a fork it has to become in a place where there is two pieces at once so the maneuver i or like i do it every time is that i move out my bishop onto this square and the opponent goes and tries to attack my pawn on the king side it attacks it so i don't really care about the pawn because it's just one point and i take my other knight out onto this square so of course he captures my pawn and this pawn is officially out of the match and i also capture his pawn so that pawn is also out of the match so when the pawn is out of the match then the person can either attack my knight by saying that please go out for my territory or it can just stay there and do nothing or it can just develop but for the fork tactic this attacks two pieces at once so for instance as you can see this knight can eat either the queen or the rook and the points of these pieces are that the pawn is of course one point the rook is five points the knight also known here is three points and the bishop is three points however the queen the largest piece of them all is nine points and the king is the whole game because if you lose the king then you can't be playing so as i was going with the fork tactic the fork tactic basically it covers two attacking two pieces at once so the guy has to guess in order to save one piece if the guy thinks that he wants to save his rook that's a bad choice for him because the queen is 9 points and the rook is 5 points so 9 versus 5 equals a fair count of going to 9 so i would gladly capture the 9 point piece for a 3 pointer it's basically like you're going and trading with someone so now if the queen wants to save herself then i can capture 3 for 5 this is used in a lot of situations for my playing because the rook is really valuable piece whenever it's activated so i always take the rook if the queen moves out of the way so now the rook is gone 
So now we'll get to the thing called checkmate. I will play a series of moves and uh, you, will, you will follow. So I'll just put out my pieces back and we will get started with checkmate. So as you can see, white always moves. White so, moves first. I will certainly move it to the E4 square. From there, the other pawn will move onto the E5 square. I will move my bishop onto this square to attack the piece over here since it's only defendant by a king. And then maybe he'll respond with a knight attack on my pawn. So I will just, however, I will just, uh, I don't know. I will just put out my knight over here. He captures my pawn. Of course he will. From the capturing of my pawn, if my pawn gets away, then I can just put my queen over. Shavanath, we cannot hear you. Reach left, right, up, down, diagonal, or back. So if it moves front side, it's still in check. If it moves back side, it's still in check. If it moves here, it's still in check. But if the a king has a place to move, it won't be in check, then the check will be broken by like this. But if the king remains in the position because he is bound to, then it's checkmate because the king has nowhere to go. So now you have covered the point of checkmate. Now it will just be playing with points to see which piece you can cover the most. I will just move all of my pieces back to one spot and I will do the game again. Any questions before I move on? So Shonak, we have, yes, now it's like, you know, we are like, I think last uh, five, four to five minutes we have. So yes, let us take up questions for the day. Uh, so have you unmuted them? Because I'm not sure if I need Anushka, you want to ask your question? So if it's checkmate, that means another person wins? Yes, that's what it means. Oh, okay. Any more? Oh, yes, I see two hands. Any on. other question? Shlok, you want to ask your question? Shlok? You have a question? Yeah, okay. Um, my question is that uh, how do we do a four move checkmate? Uh, there is no fork move checkmate. It's just a maneuver of getting pieces. So uh, as I was in the position again, I will show you. So, because I heard that some people used to use the four move checkmate. Actually, if you are thinking in the way of checking the king while you're in the fork, then you're correct. But it won't be a checkmate. Because fork mates are not really real. As far as I have learned. Oh, Jess, is you that want to ask a question? Oh, I forgot to. I'm a key paper. Type green. Oh, Jess? My hair is. My. Oh, Jess, you want to ask your question? Yeah. Uh, so there, I just wanted to, like, there is a form of checkmate. There is a four move checkmate, but there is not fork checkmate. Yeah. Yeah, the four move checkmate is basically when you go back down, you uh, just take your, you put your queen out here, your bishops out here, and then boom, you checkmate. Yeah. Amrita, do you want to ask your question now? Amrita? Um, how do we, how do we make a fork, um, move? 
the fourth move again i will cover it it's so basically you uh, you have to double attack on a piece that is really defended by king so this is the king. i am attacking the pieces on the diagonal of the king and i will go back with my knight so as you can see if i take the knight on to this pawn and capture it then you can see that the knight can go either here or it can go either here if the queen is trapped, you can capture the king or if the rook is trapped you can capture the rook that is a fork because it it it, it attacks two pieces at once any more questions still mehika you want to ask your question uh, yes mataji um how do you make um what is a fork a fork is the attack of two pieces so i couldn't hear you can you speak up and how do you make it so if i come back the i have moved out my pawn for my first and then he moved out so i moved out my knight onto this position there can be many different types of forks but i'm doing the most certain one he will move out his i move out my bishop double attacking that pawn since uh, the f7 pawn is a weak pawn this pawn is f7 this is an extremely weak pawn so basically i will go and capture this pawn first so that i can gain access to capturing that pawn if he captures back i will just do a work from here like of two pieces i can either go here and capture this or i can either go here and capture this rook that is the most certain type of form uh, that work the king cannot be forked but all the other can please please pretty do you want to ask your question now pretty you want to ask your question Preeti You have a question? Okay. Rishit So Oh. Hello. Hello. I can so hear you. checkpoint actually form checkmate forms by the attack of two pieces at once whenever they are at second point so i'll just bring up the diagram again checkmate so you can see that the king is trapped in one uh, a tight spot the guy has to avoid the spot in and capture the pawn that will make it checkmate why checkmate because the queen can move either diagonal left right up or down so if it's up or down then if the uh, king moves down to here then it's still inside the queen reach it can still reach that spot so that that's checkmate the queen can reach all spots but if the king is trapped within one corner spot then it's checkmate Oh, now I get it. Mhm. Any more questions? Okay. Navneet. Yeah. Navneet, you want to ask your question now? So what, happens, yeah, so what happens when a pawn reaches the uh, other side, side of the board like, that is advanced right now but uh, a pawn for instance if this pawn is out in the board and there is no huh nothing here on moving down the board no then it can 
reform so, and make a the gopal want to talk a question okay let this finish then you can ask your question so yeah if the pawn goes to the exactly this white side of board then it can make any of these pieces except a pawn it can make a queen it can make a bishop or a rook and it can make all of those pieces regeneration okay govindo now you can ask your question okay then then the boy the, the the knight got the 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 the, one, the the lady then then the lady will come out or or the lady will be a point yeah the pawn if the pawn goes to the exact a uh, lower side of the board then it can make any piece okay thank you no problem ojasvi guru and lasya you want to ask the question yes um so uh, the rook and the king so can we both uh, swap them like uh, in chess i saw that trick before but i don't know how to do it so yeah that's uh, that's only applicable when the coast is clear so if you, as you can see that this side is fully clear so if you want to make a castle that's called a castle by the way if you want to make a castle then you have to just do that for a certain point or if you want to do it king side then you have to open up the king's uh, side of the board and you can just castle from this side to protect your king that's what the trick is it's called castling mm. okay mm. vibhu you want to ask your question now uh are we going to be playing any games like ch- games of chess uh i'm too but i'm not sure okay Are Sorry. we going to play any games? Yes. Yeah, so my question is like the rule where um you can if your queen is captured and then you get your pawn to the other side of the board, or you can get your queen back, right? Yes, you can get any piece back, queen or any piece. Oh. Okay. Okay. So uh, we have uh, finished with all the questions. and i just uh, oh there is one question by jhalak okay jhalak um um there there is one thing i needed to ask um can 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 the um queen capture the other queen the yes, the queen can capture the other queen if they are in contact so if these pawns shonak we cannot hear you Does that make sense? Um I was not able to hear you. Oh, okay, I'll just do it. So if the queen is within contact, I'll just have to make another queen, I'm sorry. Uh copy and paste. So if the queen is in contact with the other queen, then it can certainly capture the other queen if it's in contact. So if this queen is there, then it can go right up and capture the other queen. Okay. Thank you. Okay, okay so uh, thank you Shanak. Uh, uh we have already exceeded the time and I guess we have covered all the questions. Thank you for your time and thank you to all the participants who attended this session. So we will have the chess session every Monday this time and uh, hope you all liked it. So now we will be ending the session. Thank you so much.